Imagine driving down the highway and you're staying in your own lane. There's a semi truck in the lane next to you. The driver of the semi gets drowsy and swerves into your lane. You swerve into the median to avoid the semi and crash your car. You're immediately rushed to the hospital, your injuries are treated, and you recover. Now, weeks and months go by, and you're a passenger in a car driving down the highway, and you see a semi in the lane next to you. The semi induces a fear response or a panic attack. Your heart starts racing, your breathing becomes difficult, and you start sweating profusely. This fear response is called post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. Women are more than twice as likely to develop PTSD compared to men, often related to sexual assault. However, they are significantly less studied compared to men, and this is because earlier studies of PTSD have largely focused on male combat veterans. The goal of my research is to understand what is going on in the female brain that makes it uniquely vulnerable to PTSD. In the lab, we can model PTSD in both male and female rats. And we can do this by playing a tone and scaring the rat at the same time. After they develop these, so we want them to develop these fear associations between the tone. And after they develop these fear associations, we measure electrical activity in brain cells called neurons in distinct regions of the brain involved in fear memories so that we can determine differences in males and females. We measure electrical activity by using this technique called electrophysiology, which requires connecting an electrode to a neuron and measuring electrical impulses. And we try to see if these electrical impulses change after rats are conditioned to fear the tone. My hope is to identify and target certain brain regions in the female brain for therapeutic treatment. So far, we have learned that a certain brain region involved in fear memories called the retrospinal cortex shows different electrical activity in males and females. Our future goal is to understand what is driving or controlling these differences in the retrospinal cortex. Is it possible that the female retrospinal cortex may be communicating or engaging with different brain regions than the male retrospinal cortex? Or could it be that hormones may be influencing the retrospinal cortex in females differently than they are in males? Future work is required to resolve these questions, to develop sex-specific treatments, and improve the quality of lives of women suffering from PTSD. Thank you.